So I was going to try a video on how Zipex holds the beast side of Inferno, but realistically it's all about that banana control early on. And as with anything utility based, Astralis seem to be the best at it by quite a stretch. So I'm going to break down today exactly how they claim this banana controls the CT side and how they react to different scenarios depending on what's happening. Also notice Glaive is teleporting across your screen right now because Panorama didn't fix everything. So to start off with these banana controls, one player always smokes first and Molotov's close just because of the timings of it, followed by a deep Molotov by the other player. And you notice right now Zipex is jump spawning. That's because if we look at the banana from a side angle right now, the gaps between these two Molotovs, there's a little spot in the middle, which Zipex will see uh, by jump spawning. If anyone's standing in that position, he'll be able to spot them, pre-fire them or nade them depending on what's going on. So this is followed by a nade and a flash and Zipex coming down here. You may think right now Zipex is a little bit not careless, but he's very fast at clearing this out. Obviously, he has a UMP in this scenario, but if you look at that flash where it landed on your screen, it's actually behind where these two players could potentially be hiding. We've seen players hide just to the left, players hiding to the right right now, but Zipex seeing very really confident clearing out these two positions. And that's because of the, the Molotov, actually, that Glaives throws. If you see the one he throws, he actually lines it up. It's not just a deep banana Molotov. It's a very specific one. And if we look at how where it lands, it actually covers this left corner and in the right hand near behind the logs. And this is actually perfect because there's two hiding spots which are very common from the T side. They can't sit anymore. You don't need any nade stack or anything. We've seen some teams try and implement. Molotov at those two areas. Zipex does hard clear right, as you notice. That's because sometimes the molly doesn't quite spread. A little bit of inconsistency there. So basically, the only spot any T player can hide right now is that little gap we saw Zipex jump spotting at the beginning. And just like that, two Molotovs, one smoke and a jump spot, you have Banana Lockdown, right? Have they broken the game with this one Molotov? Well, not really, because this all looks really simple and nice when there's no one actually contesting Banana. So we're going to look at some scenarios and how Astralis adapt when the other team does actually try and push the pressure to get some Banana Control. Now, if you're a thinker, you've probably had the idea of what if we just beat the first Molotov because it does take a second to line up and travel through the air and then just smoke the second one and try and bully our way with speed almost just up banana and onto that B bomb site. Well, Glaive is very aware of this possibility and their counter for this is just one flashbang and it's as simple as that. And you can see in this particular scenario, same utility as we saw last round, but as soon as Glaive feels any, um, any sense or feels at all that this rush might be coming up B, he turns around and looks into the sky. And there's countless times I've been watching demos and he turns around, no rush is coming, but if he thinks there's the slightest chance, he's ready to throw this counter utility, just ready to lock down this, uh, this top B banana and he's actually gonna challenge this fight. And this is for multiple reasons. One, you can see right now, even if Team Liquid do come through with a flash or whatever, they're still at a slight disadvantage because they are running through a smoke, which of course isn't ideal in any gunfight. So one, Zipex has the advantage already, even if he is just fighting straight off. Secondly, is if they come through this smoke, they're either blind or they're on the other side of the smoke. So Glaive has the advantage one way or the other. It's likely they're not going to be flashing once their team is already up. So you're going to see Zipex go down in this scenario, but the flash is going to come through from Glaive, blind everyone who's through that smoke, and he has a nice 3k cleanup before NAF comes in. Other thing to note is obviously there's a slight variations often in how Astralis hold. We'll talk about this more in a minute, but also devices often here is the third player locking this down. And you can see he's not even going to fight with his AWP. So even if you get these two openers, maybe Magisk or maybe they only get two kills between them or three kills between them. There's often the third player here. Device doesn't even want anything to do with it. He's just going to throw his grenade off the wall, ready to use those nades as we know Astralis love to do. He actually get a kill in this scenario. And even if he doesn't, you're all weak, probably losing that fight anyway. And it's just a great reactive play overall. So that's how they deal with a rush. And that's the most obvious, almost counter to this initial utility usage I did show you in the first round. And these slight variations really are key for Astralis. You know that very first clip I showed you? Say it is just two players there throwing their Molotovs and their smoke. If a good flash does catch them, you can definitely get onto the site in a 3v3, even a 4v3, and really get that B control. But if there's a third player here, or they're running something different in Astralis, you're running into the meat grinder and basically giving up a round automatically, such as this one here. Again, slight variation. Just a nade in from device this time, rather than posting the angle straight away. It might not seem like much, but it does slow down any rush. Obviously, we know how the grenades grip you, and does a little bit extra utility damage. Also, Zipex playing it differently. After he's thrown his Molotov and smoke, as per usual, he's actually going to get nice and close. Once his smoke goes out again, some aggressive take. He's just going to come in and have a jump spot. What's going on in Banana, he's saying. Let's have a look here. And look at his positioning right now. Say a flash does straight away come in. It's probably not hitting him. We look at where he's looking right now. He's looking down Banana up that wall, looking into this wall area. So we see even when this flash does come in from the mouse sports side, nice and high in the sky, it actually does blind him. The rest of the players aren't so blind from Astralis. You can see Glaive isn't blind at all in his position because they are challenging this. And again, they're playing together slightly different to before. So even if you can get caught off by a flash in one scenario, you're now no longer flashing this particular setup of Astralis running and vice versa. So it's very difficult 
for a team to work out exactly how to counter this. You can see, even with Christian running through, he's going to go down. Bit of a meat grinder. Everything's coming through. And even if they try and come through this, which they're not going to, I hope... Yeah, they're not going to because they know we've just lost two players. Slight variations from Astralis. That's actually so incredibly important. If you're on the same thing over and over and over again, there's obviously a counter to almost everything in this game. Nothing's perfect. No way to win every single time. But these slight variations by Astralis are so incredibly important to consistently locking this down so no one can just hard and it straight at you and throw the perfect God Flash to blind you every single time. So what I've just shown you is majority of the time what Astralis does. Those very standard Molotov smoke, slight variations I said, very important. But other things they run are larger variations, I guess I'd call them, but they're definitely less common than what I've just showed you in the start of this video. One of them is device peaking this angle. The first thing being the smoke he throws off the wall. Uh, basically what that does is, I'll just pause it for a second, but what that does is it basically puts out any Molotov that might come at this top banana area. If it does land at this barrel, it's just going to put it out in a way that he can still peak this line relatively clearly. And obviously he just peaks himself onto this angle and takes it away from any team liquid play. Obviously Zipex did also flash him onto the angle uh, with just a very standard banana pop flash. Now then banana control is locked down. So often enough again this deep banana control it does end up with the Orpa just holding this down by himself in multitude of ways. One of them can just be a jump spot, other ones can be just to hold it and they're going to fall in a very standard way that you might see in majority of rounds. Zipex does rejoin him in this scenario but often they just leave him here until he gets flashed off the angle. So you can see once the round winds down a little bit in this particular one device just takes the angle and Due to some relatively poor utility usage or just timing, or maybe just a little bit of unluckiness, he is able to get these first couple of picks. Reposition onto this second line before falling back onto the sun. It's very standard of Orpers falling back the first angle, taking the next one till they're flashed off or someone peeks them, and taking that second angle straight away. That's very standard controller field, the Orpa playing this kind of angle. But as you can see in this scenario, it's not always going to be the case with Astralis. Again, you expect the four players to go over towards A, maybe rotating over if they get some kind of read coming in. But usually you just have this one player here, early warning system, the CTs have time to rotate off Speedway or wherever they're coming from. But even with Mouse Sports doing a great job of utility forcing Device off, just every now and then, Zipex will just stay here with Device, and you can see it's going to completely catch a player off guard, smoke himself away, he keeps his utility ready to escape, stay alive for as long as possible, flashes over from Glaive, and he just gets away like that. And again, Another variation on the very standard 4-1 hold that you'd expect most AWPers and CT sides to set up with. Every now and then, just throwing this little this little wrinkle in Zipex sitting at the sandbags or in different scenarios, playing together in different roles, and just catch a team off guard. And again, it's all variation. This is one of the reasons Astralis are so successful. Is they don't have a deep playbook. They have a playbook that can look the same, but be very different on both sides of the map, even though we are just focusing about CT in this particular scenario. And of course, there's even variations on this B pick. Notice that Zipex is a very shallow flash in this scenario, basically to blind him when orping from that T ramp area for device to take the angle with the AWP. But you can see, in this particular scenario, they're actually going to have a, a rifle a peek onto it, so it's going to be a much wider flash. Are prepared to get anyone maybe trying to push through into the banana area. As you can see, good flash. FNS is a bit blind. Magic's going to completely wide peek. So much wider flash for a much wider peek. And again, variation. You're probably sick of me saying variation. I'll probably stop saying it. But again, variation. And the last thing I want to talk about before I show you my favorite Astralis clip is obviously a nade stack. It wouldn't have been an Astralis demo without seeing a nade stack. And I'm going to talk about what this does for the Astralis, just the timing of how they take the banana control if they use this nade stack. So you see it's often used in Force Spies or Ecos. One thing I want you to notice right now, just because it's important for when I'm pointing this out, is notice right now in the bottom right with Zipex, he has a nade, a flash, and a smoke. That's actually wrong. I'm going to see him use a Molotov in a second. I think it's a glitch with Panorama. Hopefully it's fixed by the time I release this, but if not, Someone message Val very fast. What's going to happen is if you throw these grenades in towards this area, you can see it's going to get a kill straight away. They're going to do a whole lot of damage. So one, if you do want to rush it, you're already screwed. Two, if you do want to fight this as the T side, everything's now stuffed up for the timing of the Molotovs or what you're expecting to see. So if you see instant Molotovs, as we've seen in all those previous examples I've shown you, that's no longer a thing right now. They've all got their Molotov soon. It's just glitched, I think, in the in the new update. You see Zipex is going to be able to play his Molotov and Molotov and actually get a kill as players are just running into his Molotov and dying straight away. So just the timing, this all screws up is if it was a more methodical take from Cloud9, the rest of the Astralis members still have their Molotovs. They can push them back at different timings. They, again, control the pace once Cloud9 have shown their hand. If it was some kind of buy with more utility trying to push Banana Control back. And again, timing has all changed. And variation has happened once more. But besides that, guys, I'm going to leave you with my favorite Astralis clip. Make sure to subscribe and like the video if you like this kind of content. And I'll catch you all in the next video.